I had a few optional extras installed. Oh, dear me. I'm terribly sorry. The third generation Sanyong Muso. Could this possibly be the most capable pickup truck on the UK market? Should you care? Why? Let's find out, shall we? Sanyong? Goes that! Tying us to what we're Call home even if the sight Of it has not yet touched our eyes And here we are And we're together Even if we are apart And we're together when we're together Something big is happening Among us It's not as if we don't have to deal with our shortcomings So welcome to another episode of Tree Jacket Reviews Another special one This is a 2020 Sanyong Musso Rhino long wheelbase and I'm very very pleased to say that it's been lent to us by Platinum Sanyong of Froome. We're just driving near the Orchard Lee uh, Golf Club as well which is a beautiful location I thoroughly recommend coming here and uh, we're very kind, very glad that they give permission to film here and so thanks Platinum. Platinum. Before I get into more detail about the Sanyong Muso Rhino, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, to like this video and to leave a comment below. It really does help us out and allows us to make these episodes even faster. So the Sanyong Muso originally was launched in 1993 and it was designed originally by Ken Greenlee. It was Sanyong's first vehicle to be sold on the UK market as far as I'm aware and it didn't exactly leave a, a very big impression. Sanyong have always been quite a sort of uh, a small brand up until recent years and that first generation Muso because of its slightly controversial styling wasn't perhaps the most popular with uh, people who'd be chosen something like a Mitsubishi Shogun or an Isuzu Trooper. However with this um, third generation model that was an SUV this is actually a pickup truck based on the Rexton platform Sanyong have really done their homework in terms of making something that is very 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 easy to drive whilst also being capable and very very well equipped for not much money at all this third generation Muso was launched in 2018 and the trim levels available are EX Rebel Saracen, Rhino short wheelbase and Rhino long wheelbase. This is a Rhino long wheelbase and this was launched on the market in the spring of 2020. This car has only done about 600 miles so it's pretty new and the Rhino short wheelbase was a very short lived affair. That was really like a first edition um, when the car was launched. This one is a permanent addition to the range and it is about 31 centimeters longer than the standard Muso. It costs about £36,000, including VAT, and has standard four-wheel drive. In the short test drive we've got today, we're not going to get anywhere near to assessing its full capabilities, but nevertheless, it is good to get a bit of a flavour of what this is like if you're considering one. So I know we don't talk about diesels much on this channel, but the only power plant available with the Muso, if that's any model, is a 2.2 litre diesel generating 178 horsepower. It's the same engine that you get in the Rexton, it's the same engine that was in the previous generation of Corando and in the Turismo, and it actually has 420 newton metres of torque in this particular application, and we have a six speed ASIN automatic transmission. With the other trim levels, you can get a six speed manual. I don't know which I prefer really. I quite like the sort of character of this particular um, engine and gearbox. It suits it quite well. If you want to see some more, um, I suppose, strenuous <laughs> footage of uh, a Muso Saracen being put for its paces, then have a look at the Planet Auto review of that where they towed a uh, two ton Mercedes Benz from the Midlands all the way to the Lake District. Um, I was in part of that video too myself and I was very impressed with the capability of the truck. 
one of the things that I was really pleased about driving this is just how easy it is. Sure, the suspension at the back, it's leaf springs due to the extended length of the bed. It does sort of jiggle around a bit and it's perhaps not the most comfortable ride ever or in any vehicle, but compared with other pickup trucks like a Nissan Navara or an Isuzu D-Max, uh, Ford Ranger, Toyota Hilux, all of which seem to cost a little bit more if you equip them to this kind of standard, it's actually very good. The amount of space in here is, is really ample. I mean, um, uh, Graham, who um, very generously uh, arranges um, the, the loan of vehicles to us at Platinum Sanyong, he's six foot eight and just tall, and he fits in here really nicely. There's not many vehicles that you can say that and then actually fit somebody of his size in the back too, which is um, it's pretty remarkable, actually. If you are somebody who wants to tow a boat, if you're somebody who wants to transport logs, or anything like that in the back, perhaps a crushed up cube, a mini metro, or whatever it is you want, then you'll find this will suit your need admirably. And we've got so many different features in here, it doesn't feel like stripped out or anything, which pickup trucks really can do. One thing I would say is that we do have soft touch materials on the top of the doors, we don't um, have them on the side of here. But that's actually okay, because this feels like a very capable and very sturdy truck indeed, and you do get, as with all Sanyongs, a 150,000 mile seven year warranty. The range starts at um, around the 25,000 pound mark for the EX model, rising to about 36,000 pounds, as I said, for this uh, Rhino Long Wheelbase edition. And it's actually, it's actually pretty good value in those, in those sort of terms. In terms of fuel economy, WRTP figures suggest about 28 miles per gallon. Although actually, I've noticed that this 600 mile example has actually been getting about 29.5 miles per gallon, so it's actually not that bad. The only real thing I, I would say is that compared with something sort of like the Corando that um, we've been driving this morning, the car is a lot heavier than something like a, you know, a, a Corando or um, a Tivoli or something like that, so it doesn't feel quite as urgent when you're coming at junction and things like that but actually it's not too bad you just have to remember to stamp the throttle a little bit harder it's not so much of an issue and that 400 newton meters of torque will push you forward as quickly as you really need it to go Okay. I must say, the test drive I've done of this car really does not in any way showcase its capabilities. Anyway, let's uh, take a look at some more practical things you can do with the Musso Rhino and have a look at the truck bed. It's only when you come to this kind of angle on the Musso Rhino do you realise just how enormous this is. This is the longest bed of any pickup that you can buy in this country. Let's open it by pulling this release lever here. The bed is just over 1.3 metres long and it has a payload of one tonne. You can tow. 3,000 kilograms with this particular truck, which is incredible, and the gross train weight is 6,900 kilos, which is extraordinary. So if you want to tow, I don't know, three metros or something like that and put um, a squashed up metro on there, then you can. On the truck bed here, which is fully lined already, we've got these metal tie down points. On that side we've got a 12 volt socket and on the standard um, Musso, for example the Saracen, this would be exactly one meter in length. One of the things that you really can do with on this um, Rhino model though is this standard reversing camera and these parking sensors. 
One of the things I like about the Muso Rhino is the fact we've got this grab handle here to ease getting in and also a side step there. And indeed, actually, the sills are covered by the door when it rains, so you don't get your trousers all mucky when you get in and out of the truck. That's a big plus. Now, we do have leather seats in here, which is lovely. They're actually heated in the back, which is a very, very unusual option for a vehicle of this class. We've got this lovely armrest in the centre with some cup holders. We've also got some vents for the rear passengers, and you can fit three people across. One of the things that, that is actually really good, this is my driving position, I'm 5 foot 11, I like to go quite, back quite far as well, but when I was um, with Planet Auto who had a Musso Saracen back in January that they allowed to travel in for um, a, a few miles, was that I could fit behind Ben who's 6 foot 3 and it was pretty comfortable, but the rake of this bench is actually much better than most of the pickups I've ever sat in it's a lot further back and so it doesn't feel like sitting in a church pew which is a real bonus stepping into the front of the Musa Rhino is pretty straightforward it's not really a problem we'll just turn that off so it stops beeping at me it's actually very very well equipped in here it's similar in cabin design to the Sanyong Rexton which of course shares the same chassis as this and we've got all kinds of luxury features in here. I've got a heated steering wheel, rear cross traffic alert, dual zone climate control, heated seats, ventilated seats, switchable automatic transmission, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, built-in sat TomTom -tom sat nav, DAB radio. This is definitely not as austere as you'd imagine most pickups would be. As always, uh, let's see if my secret mission documents fit into the glove box of the Musso. No. And unlike on uh, my Tivoli Ultimate, there's no place for putting a secret rifle in the dashboard. Let's see if we can just put this in the door pocket instead. Yes, that's fine. So if we switch the car on by using this start button, we do have keyless entry in this particular model. We can see that we've got all kinds of things to play with on the front of here. I've got all sorts of um, instruments and readouts, conventional dials in this, as well as a conventional handbrake, which is always a big plus from me. The doors have um, power folding mirrors, four electric windows, actually they've got both, all of them go all the way down, which is brilliant. Um, also got automatic lights, automatic wipers, one thing you don't get, which is very curious in this pickup, is any form of LED daytime running lights. You do get those on the Saracen model, but this only has conventional incandescent bulbs for the daytime running lights. A bit curious. With that enormous gross train weight and the ability to tow up to three tonnes, you'd expect this to have a proper low range four wheel drive mode. Indeed it does. We're in two high at the moment, there's also four high and for low. I'll just leave that at the moment because we're never going to get anywhere close to exploring the capability of this Muso on the brief test we're doing today. We've also got hill descent control which is a bit of a must in an off-roader these days and uh, we've got reversing camera which you're going to need to be honest in a vehicle that's 5.4 meters long and the rear cross traffic alert which is ideal for reversing in uh, tight car parks or something like that. Everything is quite easy to find and quite well laid out. The steering wheel feels very nice quality. It's heated in this model as well. Um, obviously got cruise control and um, all the usual safety features you'd expect, like um, dual front airbags and uh, dual side and curtain airbags. I don't know what the year end cap uh, special rating for, for this, this Musso is, so you'd have to check that. But uh, it does feel very reassuring to be driving this car because everything feels so solid and everything just seems to get smaller when you're up in this. You feel like you're the, the king of the road. Right then, what do I think of the Muso Rhino? You might think that 36,000 pounds is an awful lot of money to pay for a pickup truck. But actually, if you compare this with other vehicles in its class and bear in mind the level of equipment, capability, and the 
actual length of the load bed, you'll find that nothing quite compares with this. We've had a lot of fun filming it today. Oh, <laughs> excuse me. I'm terribly sorry. Glad I insisted you brought that cello. Thank you for watching this episode of Tweed Jacket Reviews. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I find cars of people on a professional basis. To find out more, please visit my website or my Facebook page. Links are in the description below. Thank you.